Come and catch the vibe. Welcome to Easy Weekend. It's Easy Weekend. Cats can't see me. Yo. Yo, listen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the sit down. Mm -hmm. We're back at it again. Um, make sure you like, subscribe, all that YouTube jargon that they be talking. Appreciate you. Um, Believe today, that. joining me is um somebody that was very instrumental in my early career oh, in radio. I like that talk. Um, I, I, I my first radio gig was in Philly. Mm. Um, Sarah, Lady O was the PD Lady out o. there in Philly. She gave me my first shot, and when I touched down in Philly. She goes, her and QDZ, because QDZ was Shout also- the Q, legend. An another one. He, Super he, legend. They both told me, if you want to be good out here, you got to go see Tone Trump. Believe Tone that. Trump is the king of Philly. You got you to go Believe see Tone. Believe that. I went to go see Tone Trump. I interviewed my man. And history, a lot of history. Since, I, I've always, my door's always been open to you, Tone. Yeah, absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, at one time, for Tone Trump. Oh, yeah, the, the top Oc is in the building. New York City, New Jersey, Philadelphia, Tri-State. I'm in the building with my brother to the whole world. And um, I, I want to give a big shout out to you for you said some key. You said my door is always open, and in this industry that we in, that's a rarity. So I salute you for that. So whether I'm in a blockbuster movie like Creed, I can call you. Whether I'm falling back like I am right now for Ramadan, I can call you, and I appreciate that. I don't I don't undervalue that at all because. I'm somebody that's been in this game long enough to where I've had interactions with pretty much everybody mm -hmm. from interns to Jay-Z. I've been in the building, you know, on phone calls with 50, all types of stuff. And it's very rare. You know what I'm saying? That's why I miss the, the legend K. Slay so much because he was just so genuine peace, and so real. You know what I'm saying? And you, you, you don't find it in this game. So I want to salute you, bro. And, and I've been watching you do your thing. Anytime I see you, you know, going the behind the scenes of other shows on this on this amazing platform, I'm always proud. I'm like, yo, that's my bro. So keep going, keep winning, bro. Thank you, thank you. Um, Believe that. Before we get into the important business, yes, sir. Um, I I recently um, left my allegiance of the Brooklyn Nets. Mm. Okay, I, I was smart a big Brooklyn man. Nets smart fan. Smart man. I, 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 I was with the Nets since they was in Jersey. I'm a Jersey kid. This, this was the team of my youth. Right. So when we got KD, I was. It I was said up. we it was lit. lit. It's lit. <laughs> Fast forward, we don't got KD. You we know why I love the Nets? You know why I love the Nets? I think you know. Because ben. we took fucking Ben Simmons There from you go. <laughs> fucking Ben Simmons. Fucking. So, um, Shout to Ben Simmons. I put a tweet out on Instagram and Twitter. I said, I'm leaving Brooklyn and I'm going to Philly. Because that was my first radio home and I needed to get the cosign from Sarah. Like I said, she was the first to put me on QDZ and Tone Trump. But you so, know what? But is, it, oh, is, it, is it okay if I'm a Philadelphia 76ers fan for this playoff run? For this playoff run, I will allow that, but you have to denounce the Giants as see, well. This, yo, see, yo, see, Eddie F said the same the, thing to me. You have I'm to not denounce. doing that. We can't have no Giant fans. You gonna curse our Sixers? So it's like we got a good chance this year. Like it's a lot of injuries in the NBA, a lot of things going on, and we got a healthy heart and Embiid. We got a real shot this year to really have a parade. So if you want to ride with us, I'm willing to do it. But you gotta denounce the the, the little uh, the little blue Giants from uh, from over in New Jersey. You know who don't even play in New York. You gotta denounce them. And then, you know what I'm nah, saying? Nah, I told And we'll give you an Eagles pass. Nah, and I'll bring you to an Eagles nah, game. Nah, 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 nah. That's it. Fuck it. Back to the Nets. <laughs> Back to Come the Nets. Come on, Bridges, man. Let's <laughs> fucking ball out. Let's go, Ben Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Back to some serious business. Let's go. Okay. So, you 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 step back from music mm -hmm. for a little bit. Why? Um, I had I had a chance. Um, Allah blessed me to visit Africa. I went to mm. Africa um, about two and a half years ago. I went on three different mission trips, two to Kenya and one to Ethiopia. And like the time I spent out there, you know, it humbled me a lot. It made me realize how far I was away from where I needed to be religiously, spiritually. Mm. I seen these these children who literally had nothing and how much they love God. It like it humbled me. It floored me where I was like, yo, I'm back in America, like focused on all the wrong things. I'm still worried about money and how I'm looking and Instagram and music and doing features and all that stuff that don't matter in the afterlife. Like, when it comes time for me to see my Lord, he not going to care who I did songs with. Mm -hmm. If anything, he's going to punish me for who I did songs with. <laughs> so being around these children, I, I, I'll give you an example, man. I was in an orphanage, and I asked this kid. I said to the translator, I said, ask him if there's anything I can do for him. And right away, the little kid starts shaking his head, no. And I'm like, he says something in his language, and the guy says, he says, we want nothing from you. We have the Quran. He tapped his, which is our holy book. And when I tell you, like, bro, like, I ain't no emotional dude. Like, I don't cry at movies. I Like, last time I cried before that day was probably, like, the birth of my youngest son, Abdul. So I don't really cry. Like, I'm all cried out from just, you know, our environment. But I literally, like, I couldn't control it. Like, uncontrollably, like, tears just flowing down my eyes. Like, he was so kind. This is a kid who literally eats the same thing every day. He's never heard of Drake. He's never heard of LeBron. They don't know what Wi-Fi is. They literally study Korean all day. No toys in the whole orphanage. No devices. These kids got bunk beds and their word of God. And none of them was complaining. 
none of them was sucking their teeth. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. for me, when I came back to America, I really wanted to take a break from the nastiness of social media, the nastiness. This mu- the music industry is. Hmm. I was in the streets before I was in music, and I tell people the, the music industry is worse than the streets. Absolutely, you know what I'm saying. Absolutely, <laughs> especially right now. You know, New York is looking crazy right now. I'm not sure as you know, you look on the internet and stuff like that, and it, it hurts me because New York is my second home, and I see different things. You know, you got arrogant rats and you got dangerous rats and stuff like that. So it's like the streets are officially, you know, over, and we got to, we got to, you know, and, and that's one of the reasons why I'm coming back to music and coming back to entertainment because I have a powerful message, and I want to really. I, I'm not going to wait like some other dudes to get in a situation and then become a rat and then say the streets are not what it is. I'm going to mm. tell y'all why my name is in good standing. Like right. I'm a man of respect, a man of honor. I'm a Muslim and I'm letting you know now I've never told on nobody. I've never ran, but I'm also going to tell you you're crazy if you want to be in the streets right now. It's a reason why they call it trapping and trap. They trapping us up. Everybody I talk to, I talk to real kingpins who tell me, man, if I can go back, bro, I wouldn't go near a drug. And right now, it's not even the risk. Don't, the risk and the reward don't even add up. Dudes is out here. You know, you can go on the internet and sell some shirts and make more money than you can sell selling Back. drugs right now. So, I just want to, you know, I just want to, you know, why, 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 you know, I have a chance and a platform and a name and a voice and a clean face. I want to encourage the youth in the right way and, and and my people in general, even people my age and older. I want to encourage them in the right way because I've seen it all in this game. You know what I'm saying? And I want to be able to educate, entertain, and empower. So, what's the message this time around? The message this time around is just, you know, be 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 understanding, be patient, and realize God is with the patient. That's my message really right now for the month of mercy and the month of Ramadan is just be patient. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're dealing with, whatever is good or bad, thank God. Like I, I say, alhamdulillah for the good, alhamdulillah for the bad. Last year during Ramadan, it was the worst Ramadan of my life, but I ain't give up. And guess what? This year, Allah has blessed me with the best Ramadan of my life. So a year later, it's all switched up. Last year was a dark, dark time in my life. I couldn't even pretend like I was okay on social media because I wasn't okay. I was feeling guilty for, like, eating food. Like, I was feeling like I, I literally met a lady who said every day I, she drinks goat milk and she has, like, this thing that's like a paste that's, like, would be, like, rice for them. But it's literally, like, garbage. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so... And she she was smiling and she prayed for me. She grabbed my hands. This lady with nothing grabbed my hands and prayed for me. And for me, I, I get chills every time I think about these people, you know, and um, the, when I say these people, my people, I'm speaking about Wajir County, and it's a, it's a part of Kenya that's so desolate. Like, and uh, I was I was blessed to work with Muslims of the world. We helped raise millions of dollars for those people, and it's still not nearly enough for what they need and different things they need. But um, my message to my people and to my culture is just suba, which is an Arabic word for patience. Be patient, because God is with the patient. Whenever we rush, why do you think we always mess up when we rush? If you rush out the house, you leave something. If you rush down the steps, you hit your foot. If you rush, which it, it's, it never goes good. Rushing never goes good. Today, I took my time. You told me to be here at 2.30. I'm coming all the way from Philadelphia. I was parking at 10 after 2. You know why? Because I didn't rush. Mm. I prayed. I took my time. Got the kids ready. Got everybody settled and scheduled it out. Mashallah. <clears throat> you said something <clears throat> that I'm going to take to my son. Mm. Uh, I had my son with me this past week, and... um. I love seeing you with your boy, man. I, I see you. I, I could tell it, it, uh-huh. it, it, it screamed through the phone, bro. And um, he's giving me like arrogant vibes. Like he's he's not appreciative. Like we had a party Sunday, we went to Chuck E. Cheese. The next day, we went to the like, and then on, on Thursday, he's like, "I'm like, yo, fam." Yeah, my mine too, bro. But <laughs> and, but, but my 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 ment- my messed up psychological psyche as a dad is. Damn, I gotta do more. The minute he's yeah, 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 he's gonna yeah, go back yeah. to mommy. Oh, I didn't do nothing, bro. That's another form of RPS, whatever that thing yes. is. That's another form of that for us. But what you just said to me right now is, mm-hmm. I should have done the opposite. Showed him the party, the, the, the everything that you had, and then I should have brought you to where these kids have nothing for you to appreciate what you just went through. That's why I bring my kids when I feed the homeless, because my my kids used to have an issue with wasting food. Daddy, I'm done. Oh, my, my daughter, the, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> she takes a couple of licks of lollipop yeah, yeah, and throws yeah. it. I'm, I'm like, done. yo, fam, don't ask me for no candy the rest of the day. And then you know what I did? I showed my kids, the children in Africa, and I, sh- I took my kids to a section of Philly called Kensington, and I let my kids hand waters and stuff out. And my kids got back in the truck and was like so shocked. And these and these are young babies. At the time, my kids were like, this is like two years ago when I first took them out to help me serve, and they were like four, All right, back, so six, so and like so nine, you know what I mean, like okay. around them ages, and, 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 it, and it really touched them. Like, you know, my son really, he, they couldn't fathom it. Like, you mean, what, what's homeless people, daddy? Homeless people don't have a home. They don't have food. They eat out the trash can. Eat this. And I'm explaining it, and then, you know what, the, subconsciously now, he gets to the end of his food, and I said, you done? Almost. You see what I'm saying? He look at his plate. Almost, daddy, is a different mindset. 
but I had to show them. We have to remember that they not going to do what we tell them. They're going to do what we show them. Mm-hmm. It's like my son, like my younger children, they mock me praying. You know why? Because they always see me pray. My older son, I, I was in the streets and stuff heavy. So he was mocking, you know, he looking in the mirror trying to be a rapper, yeah, yeah. trying to be Tone Trump. But the, the littlest son, you know, when he want to act like his daddy, he pull out the prayer rug. Yeah. And he his head. Yeah. So that's just a sign of like, they going to do what we show them. You can... You better not. Uh, my mom told me a bunch of stuff, and I would walk out her door, and it'd be lit. Same thing. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you know, but but I, I love that you asked me that. What's the message? And I want I want to convey that big time on this platform. Patience, man. Be patient. Like to the ladies that got a good man who may not be making all the money in the world right now. Be patient. Like stay down until you come up. Don't be crazy, but be patient. To the brothers that got a female who might not got that perfect body and all these. Be patient. Get her a gym membership. Everybody, like we gotta work with each other and love each other. Because if we rush and be hasty, we gonna lose every time. So take your time. You look at you watch any basketball game. Michael Jordan, anybody. When it get crucial, what do you see that the star player or the point guard do? He grabs the ball and he goes like this. Chill. Yeah. Everybody, chill. Relax. Take That's what breath. LeBron do. That's not what yeah. the 12th man do. There's a reason why the leader does that. You know what I'm saying? So we all got to take a little deep breath. Even if you're not Muslim, even if you're not celebrating Ramadan, take this time right now to just, like, cleanse your mind, your body, your soul, your thoughts. The Internet could be a nasty place. And if you allow it to take over your brain and your mind, if you're looking at filth 100 times a day, how don't you have a filthy mind? It's impossible. I feel attacked, Tom. You're attacking me now, man. <laughs> I got filth all over this fucking Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Cause you know what it, you know, Instagram is so wicked You know how like If you like something Then it's gonna show you A hundred things Like similarity you, yep. mm-hmm. So you like one BBL You got BBLs On your timeline For three days In a row uh, ready? Uh, Again I'll be oversharing But my wife is like I know when you be liking These little pictures When you're at home I'm like what you talking about? Because my explore page is nothing but fucking bitches. There and that's you. How do you be liking them? I'm like, there so how go. does my explore page affect you? She, because we're on the same Wi Fi. I'm like, right, right. Hmm. Fellas. Fellas. <laughs> message. Anyway. Um, Real okay. Rap. So we talked about the message that you're, that you're conveying now. Mm-hmm. Now you're leaving here to mm-hmm. go be a part of. Uh, go ahead. I'm going to let you tell it. Um. I'm glad you asked me this, man. MashaAllah. We had a situation just yesterday where um, a young Muslim sister, 16 years old, was at her job, a a place called Michael's Family Restaurant and Diner in Glenside, Pennsylvania, which is suburban Philadelphia. Guys, put a picture of the place right there. Put a picture of the place right there because by by the time they see this, hopefully this place is either shut down or have done something to it. Hopefully we can help if it's not. Yeah, right. So uh, somebody, the manager, I want to say the manager at the time, asked the young lady if she could take her hijab off. Now, and, and, and the hijab is, know, is the, it's the it's the covering, it's the scarf that the women cover their hair mm-hmm. with to, to have modesty and to you know only their husband or male relatives are supposed to see him like that. So to ask her to take it off in a restaurant, you know, filled with you know all types of men and boys and women and stuff like that, and try to embarrass her and humiliate her. And to the young sister's credit, she stayed strong, she stayed sturdy, she didn't give in, she didn't take her hijab off. I think they asked her to leave. This was just yesterday, so. I spent some time on the phone with her and her family, the people from CARE, um, Imam Madris, you know, some really good people. And uh, we standing up for this little sister. One thing for sure, two things for certain, um, women in our culture don't feel protected. You see so many posts going viral saying black women are the uh, least protected people in the world. And and Muslim women feel the same way. And we got to change that narrative because my mother, my sister, my wife, my daughter, my neighbor, that's a female. My sisters in faith are not going to be walking out here not feeling protected. When we, 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 how can we call ourselves men if the women don't feel protected? Like that has to be one of the most cowardly traits that you can embody. If, imagine if your woman didn't feel safe. No, nah, no, nah, we ain't doing. You that. know what I mean? We ain't doing that. So we will be at Michael's. Uh, um, we will be uh, peacefully protesting. You know, you know, we matching energy though. You know what I'm saying? Like I told, I told the people involved. You know, if y'all want to do kumbaya, don't call me. Don't call MDF. We coming to you know turn it up. We want to make some people uncomfortable. And we can do that in a way that's still peacefully, but we ain't marching and singing. This ain't 1945, so mm-hmm. we going to go to so a strong force and let that sister know she got a bunch of brothers she didn't even know she had. You have my you have my undivided attention, yes, sir. support, and love. Whatever you need from me, you got it. I appreciate you. You are, you already did so much right there. You know, giving us that time on the air just to you man. You imagine how good that's gonna make the little sister feel when she hear that that she's being loved and represented on such a big platform. So we I love thank you, you, sis. Man. Believe we love that. You. We appreciate you, bro. Big time. Um, let them know how to get in contact with you if they want to be a part uh, of the, the protest and everything you're doing because you, you are someone that needs to be protected in the culture. Oh, man, Philly, you I got mean, one. 
I Take mean, care of my guy, Tone. Come on. Sure, love. Um, right now, the best way, you know, I, I'm one of them dudes that was, you know, a blue check boy before that you could pay for him and all that. <laughs> so I, I used to, like, pop my little, pop my talk and be like, yeah, you know, I'm going to look for the blue check and all. I can't even do that no more. So now I'm going to just say, you know, look for the pretty face and the big beard. You know, Light skin nigga Everything shit. is my name, at Tone Trump. <laughs> Light skin. You are, you know, loving it, proud. And, um, yeah, everything is my name, at Tone Trump. So definitely log on, man. Support everything we doing. We feed the homeless every Sunday. We give out free groceries every Thursday. I got the best merch in the culture and um the music is we coming back with the music too my new project executive produced by kevin gates so we ain't stopping man we coming inshallah and when that drops you'll be back top out coming soon we will be back baby paul what up baby paul super producer from new york producing the whole project so we be back up here with m easy real soon inshallah top out let's win let's win Come and catch the vibe. Welcome to Easy Weekend. It's Easy Weekends. Cats can't see me.